This is Death or Prison, brought to you by LeanOnMeUSA.org. The men you are about to hear have spent more than 50 years in prison. We bring you stories of hope and encouragement. Hello and welcome to the Death or Prison podcast brought to you by LeanOnMeUSA.org. I am Johnny Branham. To my right, Mr. Elmo Golden. To my left, Mr. Laz Lopez. And we are continuing a conversation with Pastor Dave Ferguson, author of Hero Maker. And in our previous segment, we were discussing multiplication thinking, permission giving, and disciple multiplying. What we want to start out with, Pastor Dave, is gift activation. What does that mean and how do we incorporate that in our lives? Yeah, uh, thank you. We're, uh, it's an honor to be on and we're, we're continuing to think about kind of these five practices of hero making. And if the first one is a shift in how you think and the second was a shift in how you see the world and the third is a shift in how you share this fourth practice that we call gift activating, it's a little bit different, but I, uh, maybe you want to just go ahead and do this. Hold your hands out like this. Okay, it's a shift okay, in blessing. Instead of asking God to bless the gifts that he's given you, what you do is you ask him, no, bless the leaders, okay, the people that I'm developing, I'm going to send out. See that? It's a little... Now, one of the things you're going to find, I think, with hero making is that it's a shift from kind of good to really great. So it is a good thing. It's a good thing to ask God, hey, God, you know, bless me, bless what I'm doing, bless my leadership. But if you really want to move into hero making, this is where you, where you really multiply your impact to make the biggest difference. You move from this kind of a posture to this kind of a posture. And so I even try to do this in my own life in this way. So like before I get on this broadcast, my, my tendency is to go, okay, God, help me to say the right things. Because I know I'm getting an opportunity to speak to you know, so many people that are, you know, thousands of people that are in prisons all over the, all over the country and maybe around the world. And it's a little bit intimidating, right? So bless what comes out of my mouth. That's what I typically want to do and think to do. But what I really, I, the hero maker, what they do is there's a shift. They go, no, bless all the people that hear this and that I am sending out. And so there's a shift. There's a change there. And so you think about last time we talked about the person that you're discipling. If you remember, Jesus had these 12 disciples. And then at a certain point in Matthew 28, he says to these followers, he says, okay, all the authority that I have, okay, I'm giving it to you and you go. And that's, that's, that's the fourth practice that we see in these leaders that make the biggest impact by multiplying other leaders. At a certain point, they're, they're no longer their assistant. They're no longer their right-hand person. They're no longer their apprentice or their co-leader or whatever it is. But instead, they actually fully activate their gifts, just like Jesus did with his disciples, and they send them out into the world. You send them out. And so you release them to go ahead and lead themselves. Uh, Pastor Dave, how is it possible for the, us to get the information to the men and women that are incarcerated to start maybe a movement or a wave of creating discipleship so that when they get out, they're automatically up and, they're up and running and they're disciples? They're actually spreading the word of God. I, I don't think it has to, and if I understand the question, I don't think it has to be any different inside the walls of a prison as it does outside the walls of the prison. I'm telling you, if, if revival can start inside the walls of prison, and then those people who, who, who are released, they bring that outside the walls. And so if this disciple, make, disciple multiplying is happening, where you got one, one inmate putting their arm around the other or around a couple other guys, say, hey, I'm going to show you the ways of Jesus. And really, they invest in them. When they get out, then they're gonna they're gonna know exactly how that was done for them. And when they get on the other side of the walls, you know, and with the help of some of the folks like us and what we're trying to do through community freedom, we get them a place to live and a job and and a church home. They're able to actually put their arms around other people that they come in contact to with and say, "Okay, let me show you how I was discipled, and I'm now I'm gonna disciple you." That's what I would say. What do you think? What, what's your th- what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I totally agree. When revival starts, it doesn't matter what kind of barbed wire they put up. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put myself on front street with this. Um, When I started the uh, prison ministry behind the wall while I was incarcerated, it was not the multiplication thinking. It was more like, how can I impress 
I'm just being sincere yep. here. Yep. How many I can uh, impress or how many I can get to listen to me out in the yard, how, the multiplication of the more, the merrier, the more, the better. It's all about me. It's all about the words that I use. It's all about, you know, hey, look at Laz. Hey, look at, you know, what he's doing. And this was unconscious. I look back now, there was no humility. My intentions were not the intentions of these five essentials that we are looking at. And and so when I when I look back and, and I was one of those guys that when somebody was going to be recognized and I like to thank and you know I would be like oh he's going to thank me he's going to recognize me sure I don't if pastor have yeah. has that ever happened to you for example <laughs> in the beginning of your ministry well, yes absolutely yeah it's no different inside or outside I mean different person but same story so like when I I planted a church thirty years ago right so when I start planting the church here's my dream listen to the way I'm going to say this to you. My dream was for my church to have a thousand people, right? And I thought, oh, I thought, well, I'm a, probably a good enough communicator that I can maybe hold a thousand people's attention, or I'm a good enough organizer I can put them in, you know, a hundred small groups. And and here's the thing, I think you, I'm so glad you said this, and, and that bit of authenticity I think is going to really speak to people because what we have to shift our thinking is it's not about in a phrase seating capacity it's about sending capacity because what like what i was thinking about a thousand people or what you were thinking about people come and listen to me and i get the accolades that's you're trying to be the hero i'm trying to be the hero and what we have to shift exactly. is go like it's not about seating capacity about sending capacity and that and that is a that's a big difference and it's the second one the ironic part is the second one sending capacity not seating capacity when you focus on a few and you send them, that's when you actually get the movement and you impact way more people. Hey, man, I'm bubbling over because I'm thinking about my testimony and it, <clears throat> excuse me, and it ties in with Paul and Silas. Let's hear it. How when they were beaten and they sang praises at midnight and guess who heard them? The other prisoners. Yep. Well, here I am in the county jail many years ago and there's a guy who's in there who's hollering out Bible study every night. And I heard it and I followed the sound. And that's what led to me giving my life to Christ, fully giving my life to Christ. I had, I tell the testimony of I gave my life to Christ so many times. I don't know which one took <laughs> because I, I never made him Lord and savior. Uh -huh. But when I think about people hearing and seeing it and being gravitated to, or, or gravitating to it, that's what makes me think about what's what you're talking about here and that disciple multiplying not being about having the vision of speaking to the masses but pouring into the few so that they would multiply when we talk about gift activation what are some things that are pertinent to someone who is trying to activate their gift or identify a gift in someone else yep. Well, here, here's the thing, and if, and if you go back to these five practices, and we're on the, the fourth one now, when we get to this place, we're ready to fully activate their gift, right? Because we've already been through the disciple multiplying. We've been investing in them, telling them, had the ICNU conversation, believing they can do it, and now we're getting ready to release. In this one here, one of the things I found to be really helpful is what I call a commissioning. And, when you, and, and a commissioning moment, and this can happen inside the four walls or outside the four walls, okay? Commissioning is when, as simple as this, what we do is we'll just, we place our hands on somebody and we have a commissioning prayer for them. Sometimes we'll actually even anoint them with oil, but we'll commission them with that prayer. And it might happen in a small group. It might happen one-on-one. -on -one, it could happen in a large group. But what that moment is, that's a moment that says, okay, whatever it is, this area of ministry, this area of service, this, this area of contribution, which you've been in, that you've been growing in, I am now commissioning you, you're going to lead this part of it. You're going to fully take this on, and I'm going to back off. And so in the same way, like the Great Commission, you know, Jesus said, okay, now go. You got mm -hmm. this thing, and he takes off. <laughs> That's what we have to do at a certain point. We don't keep holding on to those folks. We send them out to do the exact same thing that we did and to multiply the difference making in the ministry. But a, but a commissioning, that kind of moment, that becomes a really powerful moment. You tell them, hey, this is like your ordination. That's what it is. It's really an ordination into this next level of serving and ministry. The, the, the fourth principle, the gift that Oh, me too. Because um, the, the top three is where we get our information and we get our teaching 
and we have we understand that now we have a charge to keep. And the fourth principle, the gift activation, is discovery. You'll find out your place, your purpose, your meaning in, in the fourth principle. And that's, that's where exactly a person right. really becomes whole in Christ. Can you speak to us about that a little bit? Yeah, a, a, a part of it is a, is a fundamental kind of truth that was true. We'll go do a little bit of uh, church history here that we all kind of rediscovered with the Great Reformation. And that is what we call the priesthood of all believers. And that is the idea that every one of us have a gift that we're supposed to use to make a difference in the world. And our world might be as small as, as, the, as the walls of that prison, or maybe it's on the other side. But either way, there's a gift that we have. And in fact, one of my favorite verses in Ephesians says, there's a good work that God prepared in advance for you to do. Don't you love that? I mean, he's talking to every person. There's a good work that God prepared in advance for you to do. And what the gift activating does is that just means there's someone who's come alongside you and they said, you know what? I, I, I want to help develop you. I see this in you. I'm going to train you. That's what disciple multiplying is. The gift activating is, okay, there's the good work. Now you go do this and you find other people that you're also going to invest in. So, yes, I agree 100%. And so we go into our... our kingdom building we we're prepared we have our our gift is activated mm -hmm. we understand the, the information that we've been given through pastor through our pastor through reading uh through receiving god's spirit and now it's time to build mm. that's the part i love too. oh i love this too and and again this kind of is the culmination of all five because the first one is if there's a shift in how you think and then a shift in how you see, and a shift in now you're sharing your heart, not just information. And now you're not just asking to be blessed, but you're asking God to bless those you're sending out. This last one is really important, and it, it's, it's called kingdom building, and it's a shift in how you count. And I always I kind of hold up a couple fingers like this, because now you're not so concerned, and this speaks to, you know, you were talking about liking to be in front of the crowd or me wanting to have a thousand people. You're not so concerned about who's coming to my thing, but you're more concerned about who am I sending out to do God's thing? So how do you, because a lot of us, and I'm a little, what they call type A, right? I kind of like a goal and I like an accomplishment. I want to I get something done. I want to achieve something. So I like to keep score. And if you're keeping score, the way you keep score is not how many people are coming to your Bible study or how many people are coming to your, or part of your ministry or part of your small group or part of your worship service. But instead, you don't count how many are coming to my thing, but you're counting how many people am I sending out to do God's thing. Because if you remember this, Amen. what Jesus said to his followers, again, this, all, all these things you see in the life of Jesus. In Matthew 6, he said, no, you seek first the kingdom, not my ministry, not my small group, not my church, not my worship service. You know, you seek first the kingdom. And so you're sending people out to do kingdom work and you're multiplying it over and over and over and over again. And, um, and so it's, it really is a shift in how you count, how you keep score. Of, of how you're making a difference. I think that is so important. Speaking to a uh, pastor here, and I know Pastor Laz can agree that sometimes there is that pressure if you're thinking about it in the wrong way. You know, I'm successful if I have 500 members. I'm successful if I have 400 members. But the success is not in the numbers because Jesus, like we were talking about, took the 12 and expanded it and touched the entire right. world. So it's not about the numbers. It's about what you're pouring into the few that God is giving you. And that's encouragement. Oh, yeah. Because I believe that there's, yes, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm amen. And you go ahead. I'm, I'm with you. You're exactly right. <laughs> I should be, I should because be, I should, I, think I should about... be interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. When I think about the impact in our, ministry and what we're doing, it's always about the, what's the word I'm looking for? Quality. Thank you. Not quantity. Mr. Elmo. <laughs> it's not quantity, quality. And there are men and women inside and outside who are thinking to themselves, you know, I may never have that 5,000 member church, or I may never have the opportunity to speak before 500. Jesus took 12. And multiplied it. I look at me. I'll I'll testify and say I am a product of one or of a few people 
speaking into my life and taking the time to help disciple me. Who who was they may who, not who have was, given me? Who was your hero maker? I want to hear. What's his name? Say it out loud. Or her name. Who was the hero maker for you? <laughs> my, my grandmother was one. I love it. Because uh, when I was a young child, she would take me to church. Uh, there were men in the, the, in the prison system that actually came along when I was incarcerated that helped speak into my life. Yep. Um, I'll, I'll speak to one in, in particular. Uh, he's, he was a chaplain, uh, Chaplain Henry. He instilled in me the importance of prayer. He would hold prayer every Thursday. And he held it for an hour. And believe it or not, the most impactful time that I can say that during my 14 and a half years while I was incarcerated was not the church services that I went to, not the big prison ministries that came in. I thank God for all of them, but it was the instilling of the importance of prayer. And it was only a few of us. But that has carried me throughout my life. And guess what? Now on Wednesday nights at 630, an hour before Bible study, I hold prayer. Yep. Mm -hmm. That just goes to show as well, because the, when you, when you say you're a pastor, the first the first the first thing that they ask is how many members do you? Oh, have? I know. You know, and 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 so we should ask that question to Jesus and say, Jesus, how many members did you yes. have? And he's going to say twelve. Right. <laughs> and, and and the thing I love about he's this is see this tell this reminds us that all of us can do this. This is not just for like you know the one in 1,000 that happens to be a really gifted communicator or a charismatic leader. I mean, you're talk your grandmother did this. Uh, Henry did this. All mm -hmm. of us can do this. And again, you know what? I like, the, I like the distinction you're making, too. Yeah, it's a focus on quality. But what I love about it, too, because, again, I already confessed. I'm kind of type A. I like a, I like a goal. We focus on quality, but if we continue to focus on quality through disciple-making and gift-activating— you actually eventually, then you get quantity. I mean, again, I, we started this whole conversation, reminded ourselves that today there are 2 billion, 2 billion people alive right now that claim the name of Jesus. And all that gets traced back to those 12, right? And so, I mean, exactly. if you focus on quality, exactly. we'll get to quantity. Pastor, so that our viewers uh, get a full understanding of the hand of God and how far it will reach inside of a prison, we had also some of the administration ministering to us. And when I mean, I mean classification officers, some of the guards would actually minister, minister to us. So the, the principles that you're giving us about kingdom building and how, how the people who have affected our lives, God has placed them even behind the walls strategically to minister to our hearts so that we can become partakers in, in, in the, the kingdom building process. So this, this lesson though, is really amazing. It's something that I really needed. I thank God for, for uh, allowing us to be together and him pouring this into your spirit. It's very helpful. Oh, uh, well, thank you for letting me do it. Because in many ways, what you may not have thought of it this way, but you're being a hero maker to me. Because you have, I, I, another way I talk about hero makers, our hero makers are people who create the platform and then let other people stand on it. And you all have this huge platform that's going to thousands and thousands of people, and you're actually trusting me to kind of stand on that platform and speak to it. So I want to say thank you to you for being a hero maker to me. So that's very, very kind of you. Uh, before we end this thing, I, I got to say, I got to give our, our, our mentor, our producer, a shout out because they're probably going to edit this part, but they have created something that we can minister on and make a big impact in our community. Yes. Ken yes. McKenzie. Ken McKenzie is actually the hero maker. There you go. And they should and they should keep it in. Yes. It's a great example of what we're talking about. It, they ought to keep it in and he 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 runs from the attention of it. But when he sit, when he thinks about what he's doing uh in the kingdom, he really doesn't understand the impact and how far this is going. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we thank we thank God for That's it. That's a good word. Any final thoughts, pastor? Um, I guess I'm at, to the men I would just kind of leave you with this, too, that, um, again, this is something that is accessible to every one of us. I mean, um, because I think we maybe underestimate um, all of us uh, who have influence. If you have influence even in one person's life or a couple people's life, you are a leader. And what we're talking about, if you will begin to apply these things, you'll change how you think. Okay, it's not about me. It's about investing in others. 
And then you change how you see it and you start having those I see and you conversations and you change what's going on. And I'm going to share not just information, but I'm going to really share my life with other people. And you begin to invest in them and then you release them. And then the way you keep score is not how many people are doing my thing, but how many people are doing God's thing. I'm telling you, that is the stuff, that is the stuff of movement making and really high impact. Um, and uh, again, thank you so much for letting me be a part of what you're doing. Uh, if I can help in any way uh, in the future, count me as a friend. I'd love to do it. So thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Dave Ferguson, author of Hero Maker. You've been listening to the Death or Prison podcast brought to you by LeanOnMeUSA.org. Uh, to my right, Mr. Elmo Golden. I am Johnny Branham. And to my left, Mr. Laz Lopez. It's death or prison, but we say choose life. life. Lean on Me USA, in partnership with Alpha USA, wants to connect you to a welcoming church. To begin a new life, call 314-607-8850. Change the